Former French President Nicolas Sarkozy says allegations that he received campaign funding from late Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi are making his life hell. Mr. Sarkozy reportedly told magistrates that he is being accused without any physical evidence. He has been placed under formal investigation for illicit election campaign financing in 2007, misappropriation of Libyan public funds, as well as passive corruption. The 63-year-old denies any wrongdoing. He says his Libyan accusers are seeking vengeance for his decision to deploy French warplanes during the uprising which overthrew Gaddafi in 2011. Meanwhile, campaign group Human Rights Watch has warned that Libya is not ready to hold free and fair elections. The country's rival authorities are planning to hold parliamentary and presidential elections later this year, but no date has been set. The United Nations and the European Union support the upcoming vote, but Human Rights Watch is worried that voters, candidates and political parties are at risk of coercion, discrimination and intimidation if the ballot goes ahead. The U.S.-based rights group thinks the conditions needed for free and fair elections will be hard to meet in the North African state, which was thrown into chaos following the overthrow of Muammar Gaddafi in 2011. Joining us now to further discuss this topic is Dr. Dan Ikeri, a lecturer at the Department of Philosophy, University of Lagos, also an African Affairs Analyst. Thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Do you share the same sentiment with Rights Watch that Libya should resist rushing into elections because the country is too violent, authorities cannot guarantee freedom of speech, freedom of assembly? To a very large extent, yes, because um, you, you don't conduct elections in an environment where people are not very sure of their security, of their safety, where even the mind is not focused, where the thoughts are not balanced, where so many things are wrong. You know, but interestingly too, the, the United Nations mission in Libya had the responsibility. As a matter of fact, they had three cardinal responsibilities, one of which is to ensure that there is, you know, a constitution in place. And the other one is to see to it that there is a proper, credible, free and fair elections. And then the question of reconciliation. Now, before you go into an election, the question we should ask, has this body been able to achieve this? Because as we speak, there are still opposing camps, and they seem to be very tenacious in their positions, and which suggests that there, is, there hasn't been any little, you know, uh, what you can call a meeting point to suggest that they are going to, you know, give up their various, you know, strongholds. So how are you going to conduct the election? Are you conducting election for different, you know, uh, segments of the country as different countries or as one? You know, they... they the Electoral Commission is going to have a very, you know, very onerous, very gargantuan task with respect to conducting elections in Libya as it stands today. Libya, for now, there is a lot of turmoil. I, I do not think that the environment at the moment is safe for elections. Okay. And when you look at the period, you know, preparing for election is not just something of, uh, you know, overnight. So I share that sentiment that there will be no point in rushing into conducting election where these things have not been harmonized. One would ask what foreseeable future. Uh, we hear a voter registration process began in December, but no election date has been set with regards to parliamentary or presidential uh, polls um, in that sequence. But what, what effect is this likely to have? A lot. To start with, the process of registration that has started, we've not been told how successful it is at the moment. We've not been told the percentage of persons that have been registered. We've not been told if everything about the voter registration is in place. They are even doing overseas registration, which is, for me, that is a plus, which means that people can even vote from outside. I think that will be something above what Nigeria has achieved so far, to the point that you, you know, we're meeting with certain conditions, having your national ID card, being a, a Libyan by law, you know, then having a phone, a telephone in your country of residence, having an email and all the conditions put in place. The moment you have those conditions, you can, you know, access the site and do your registration. I think, for me, that is a plus, which I think we need to, the INEC, Nigeria, need to look at. But beyond that, what, how far have they gone with this process? Is it because the question of registration of voters and the actual, you know, presentation of that voter register for people to be sure that truly we are prepared for election is something that is very critical. As a matter of fact, the election is dependent on that particular exercise. So 
at the moment we've not been told we've not been given any any insight as to how soon that is going to be done the process is on but we've not been told how soon it is going to be done so until we have you know such you know information as to the level of preparedness of the electoral commission it, it will be difficult to say that yes electoral can go ahead this particular year in any case must it be this year what if it takes place next year will libya cease to be libya so we need to put everything in place so that whoever we emerge will be a credible candidate that the the, the process will be able to guarantee that yes we we did it well and whoever emerges will be the person that will be for the people and not the one that will eventually create another you know a uh, round of uh, what you can call disaffection and all the rest all so right. for me i think that is very critical all right, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Dan Ikeria, lecturer of the Department of Philosophy, University of Lagos, for coming on the program. Thank you so much.